Local blue collar workers cannot catch a break even in board games. Two weeks ago, Hasbro announced that three tokens representing blue collar labor will be disappearing from Monopoly boards. The wheelbarrow, the boot, and the thimble are out. They're replaced by a T Rex, a penguin, and a rubber ducky. Mike Rowe is the former host of Dirty Jobs. He says he's, quote, deeply dismayed that honest labor is being denigrated in this country. To help fix that, he's launching a new scholarship venture to promote work that is not done in a cubicle. He joins us now. Hey, Mike. We've lost, we've lost the thimble in favor of an overdressed avian. We've <laughs> lost our wheelbarrow in favor of a child's toy. And we've lost the work boot in favor of a of a dead lizard. These are these are dark days, Tucker. Well, what is a wheelbarrow exactly? This implement you speak of. This crazy invention, if I understand it right, it's got the one wheel on it and a barrel. That's huh. all the information I have. Is there a digital component to it? <laughs> yes, but it costs extra. But it's available for three easy payments, and you can have yours in various component parts in two weeks. <laughs> the wheelbarrow app, I recognize that. It's made so, in China. So this, is, without question. So this is a metaphor you're, you're saying uh, for changing attitudes about work. I'm saying more that look, you can the tail can wag the dog. We can talk about it in a lot of different ways, but fundamentally. It's kind of interesting and sometimes instructive to look around and find the ways we've either consciously or subconsciously declared war on work, or at least the yeah. traditional notions of work. And this is exactly the kind of thing. I, I don't know how, how far you want to look into it, but clearly, icons and tokens and metaphors, these are, these are powerful things. That's right. And in a, in a way, I believe it's, a fair, it's fair to say we, we represent and value things in ways that make sense to our brain. And right now, we're in the rubber ducky. Yeah, a country that taxes work at twice the rate of investing is yeah. not encouraging work. So here's, you've got these scholarships, the work ethics scholarships, and I was reading the application. This cracked me up. Here's part of it. You say you're asking applicants to sign a solemn oath not to become a lazy, self-entitled drone who blames others for their troubles and expects to be taken care of. Fair warning, not everyone's going to want to sign this. Is that a barrier to people? Now, that is, a, that, that is a loose translation of the SWEAT pledge, which stands for skills and work ethic are not taboo. And the sweat pledge is, in fact, uh, one of several things you have to agree to for a work ethic scholarship. And yes, the fact that we ask people to make an affirmative case for themselves, both in videotape and essay form and the signing the sweat pledge and a few other things, makes it very difficult to give away half a million dollars, which is something we do every yeah. year at the foundation. And it's, it's part of the reason I wanted to come on your show, because the money's there. And for people who want to learn a skill, for a job that's actually in demand, it's something that you should know about it. And we've talked about it before, 5.6 million jobs available right now, most of which don't require a four-year degree. And for whatever reason, people are not enthused by their existence. We're trying to remedy that. So you've made a living listing to people who don't get a hearing on the coasts. And, and it, it, it always raises in me like the question of, like, what do we know about the rest of the country if you live on the coast? There was this massive fire in the middle of thousands of square miles of land in Kansas, and Oklahoma went up in flames. I didn't see that covered really anywhere. Did you? I didn't either, except on my Facebook page, where about 20,000 people asked me to please post about it. These are farmers in Texas and uh, in Oklahoma and in parts of Colorado and Kansas that have literally spent most of last week shooting their cattle, mm -hmm. cattle that have been maimed in these terrible fires. It's literally the, the Katrina of the High Plains. And I learned about it from ranchers on my Facebook page, coincidentally on natural, uh, National Agriculture Day. And I posted about it. I just posted an old... Paul Harvey used to do a show, as you know, uh, the rest yeah. of the story, but he also had a, a short essay called God Made a Farmer. And I just posted that on the page with a couple paragraphs saying, look, these people, their backs are against the wall right now, and I don't think the country gets it. And that thing was shared 175,000 times. It just makes me think, what, what aren't we connected to? And I think the answer, once again, is a whole lot of stuff in the middle. Yeah, like a lot of people dying of opioid ODs, and, and, and we're not paying any attention at all. You've got a podcast. Is, is it up already? Where can we find it? So what is it? I, it's called The Way I Heard It, and I spent most of last year just seeing if anybody cared about short stories written in that Paul Harvey kind of uh, mystery way, and uh, 50 million people have apparently downloaded or viewed the thing. So 
important people have called and said you should do more. So we're doing more at micro.com uh, slash podcast, I guess. God, I just, I just shamelessly plugged that right on your show, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you, we're putting it on our Facebook page, but, do you, but just answer the mystery now. Do you go up at the end an octave, as Paul Harvey did? Good day. I do not. I go down an octave because I'm my own man, Tucker. <laughs> Good day. Right into the base. Oh, that's <laughs> like Bowser. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank Micro, you. Micro, thank you. Thank you for all this. It's great to see you. Anytime. Good to see you again.